Curry, can I ask for a favor and uh, yeah, sync, sync clap for me? Yeah, um, Kyrie Irving. Ow, in my ring. About to die in a minute, fucking with you. <laughs> Kyrie, when I woke up this morning, I set two goals for myself. Number one, learn something new, which I did some of that by speaking with Ben earlier. <laughs> I was watching a lot of videos last night and not a single video helped me learn how to pronounce your last name. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Okay, three so syllables. Okay. All right. Nat Tong Kum. Ben Nat Tong Kum. Yep. It means golden eye in oh. Thai. Shout out to your last name. <laughs> Shout out to learning something new today too. Yeah. So for those who don't know, you actually designed the Kyrie four and fives, and then now the sixes. Mm -hmm. well, let's just jump right into it, the Kyrie yeah. sixes. We started with um, Kyrie five. We said that there are some working things on there that he loves, and we didn't want to deviate from. One of them was the Zoom Turbo bag that big four foot zoom bag. And he said that that changed his game, like going from the four to the five. And we said that we need to keep that onward. So what we did was look at like just a drawing board, like what do you want to keep from the five and how do we improve? He said like court feel was something that's important to him, just feeling the court, like the secondhand nature. And so we looked at grip and traction being the thing that we uh, focus our efforts on. Not only on the bottom, where traditionally traction is like really key, but also sidewall and toes. And so like Kyrie, you know, when he plays, it's like very aggressive, like having his foot damn near touch the floor. And so like we talked about like, do you want this air to be more of a tactile uh, feeling area versus just being just something that's smooth. And so we added the 360 grip that was inspired by oh, wow. some of this like soccer shin guard that we saw. We showed this to Kyrie, it was like, yo, you, you feeling some of the direction, how these nubs really come together and feel like they're very tactile, get the, like for soccer players, get the ball feel. And so we took that notion and applied it to a Kyrie. I kind of put this on a Kyrie 5, kind of show him like in that toe area. When you toe drag, you want to feel the court. And it was something that he was interested in. And so having traction wrap up, not only on the sidewalk, but now on the top of your toe, was something that was very new and fresh to him. I asked him like, all right, with the five being this big fly trap that covers this entire range, where do you want support for the six? And he grabbed the carry five and he put his hand right here. He's like, yo, I want support right here, fam. And so what we did was like, we looked at like not having just a traditional strap here. Um, if you're familiar with the Presto, the case that's in the quarter panel, it comes all the way to the bottom of the arch area. So it gives you that nice suck and like arch support. So this strap actually has more of a support element in the arch and also the, the midfoot and over the heel and over the forefoot here. Um, and lastly, he talked about um, playing in high school in the AJ2. He's like, I love the way it felt and just the padding and support in the ankle area. We dissected an AJ2 and investigated what was the foam package, what was the density and durometer in that foam. And we looked at modern vendors, modern suppliers who makes foam that has similar properties but a new way and so we capture some of those like nostalgic moments from his high school years and apply it here give him the comfort he needs on the collar and this heel lock with this injected tpu heel counter that keeps him locked in and then number two have great conversation mm -hmm. so i was wondering if you can help me out with that of course okay of course uh, i want to share a story with you so yeah may 28th 2016 i don't know if that's significant to you but it's important to me because that was my first ever Instagram post. As you can see, that photo right there is <laughs> Mr. Irving himself at the House of Hoops oh, in Harlem. Oh, wow, man. Do you remember this photo? In Harlem? I... You probably don't, but if you look at the like section, I don't know if you can tap into that. Uh, did I like this? Yes, you did. So the universe is uh, working in mysterious ways. Is it? I don't know. I'm here with you today. You're learning something new. I you am. You accomplished both of those. That's a great conversation. <laughs> and you definitely did learn something new. Well, I appreciate it. So I know family is very important to you. And we're here to talk about the Carry Sixes, obviously. But obviously, before moving forward, we got to pay homage, right? Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk about a particular colorway. Uh, we have a mutual friend, Siraj, from Sneaker Room. This is the mom Kairi Fives. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. I um, mean, I get chills every time I grab this, man. Um, just thinking about how this collaboration even came to be, just pretty, pretty special. The connection that me and Siraj have, and also the nonprofit that he runs. Uh, and you know, it's just strictly about the community, man. He makes sure that everyone knows that, like, none of the proceeds that go to these shoes go anywhere but to a great cause. And 
you know, there are a lot of us out here that need healing from a lot of tragedy and loss, but there's happiness at the end of that light that is receiving from the angels. So, you know, this is a really special mom shoe. Um, you know, I was looking at my Kyrie threes uh, that I still have from the first ones that he did uh, that I've kept that were white and red. I, you know, nothing not coincidentally, but um, it's just really special to the hearts of different, you know, different moms out there. But if you lost a loved one, parent, you know, these are just a commemorative thing for hearts or everything, man. That's the happiness and love you got inside. I actually uh, went to that game where you played in the gold pair and you gave it to some some uh, women in the uh, military or the, mm -hmm. the services. Um, mm -hmm. So that was incredible. Mm -hmm. Just witnessing that, that was, uh, that was dope. Oh man, really special, man. Really special in terms of the connection you can have um, just through art and design and things that you create. You know, we're all connected somehow, so to have that be on that stage was incredible for me. So keeping with the family, I, I understand your daughter has a birthday coming up in mm -hmm. November. I actually want to give you a gift. Um, this is a book, ABCs for Little G's. Maybe she'll Yo, grow up to be a she would... What? Uh, so... Yo! Oh, oh sorry, sorry about man. that. I'm like messing up the whole set. My That's bad. all good. Yeah, I'm laughing like... Because this, I'm actually teaching my daughter about her ABCs right now and trying to get her memory to be back in a certain, uh, just at a certain point, man. So yeah, this is gonna help. A friend of mine, David Park, he actually illustrated the entire book. This is the second edition. Hopefully the third edition, when you go to K, instead of saying Kobe, it'll say Kyrie. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there to the universe. So if it hey, happens, man. it happens. Yeah. That is for you. ABCs for the little Gs. Yes. So moving forward, obviously the Kyrie Sixes, I learned all about the tech from Ben, so I don't need you to regurgitate that to me. I'm sure you're tired by now. So these city preheat collections right here. What, what this shows is just that we're all one community and that art can travel, you know, obviously universally, but it could travel to different individuals, how to create, uh, you know, things that they believe in into a tangible thing. Like you think about all these ideas that you have in your mind and think about how special it is and how powerful it is to take a thought and manifest it into art or something that you can actually see and that you can touch and you can feel and know that it's real. So this is a representation of all those different cities, obviously different ones for different places, but they're all the same shoe, it's just different colors for the individual communities that they represent. And that's exactly the point I was going for. You know, I wanted the Houston and New York pair to have some resemblance to Guangzhou, Shanghai, you know, all these shoes to be commemorative of when you go in those communities and they're wearing them, they're really connected in a way that this is a representation not just for our community, but for other communities all over. So. I take it you've been to every single one of these cities? I have, okay. I have, I, I have to be, I, like I better be. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, when you're not able to be there in the present all the time, or, you know, be in 11 different cities when they drop, you know, how do you still creating a lasting legacy with things that you create? And that's all I try to do. This is gonna be a global scavenger hunt for Kyrie collectors, you know that, right? Yep. You're making it damn near impossible to get every single one. It's not impossible. You're right. It's not impossible. You're right. That's, that's one phone call or a few phone calls to Berlin or Guangzhou, good luck. I wish you, I wish the, you the best, but you know, this is gonna be one of those things that um, is gonna revolutionize, uh, you know, kind of the scavenger hunt shoes. We've had it before. Uh, you know, in America or, you know, Jordan has dropped something over in China specifically or in greater China or in Asia. But for me, I wanted it to be in cities that were close in coordinates in America as well as overseas. He had this idea of like, yo, I want to have 82 shoes. I'm like, we're all like, you can't have 82 shoes. That's just a little challenge for us to kind of get out there this year. Because you want to have a shoe for every single game of the season. And so it distilled from like 82 shoes to like to 50 to 30 to then like, we said that, all right, realistically, 11 is like what we can probably get after, or 12 within that range, and he picked 11 because it's a jersey number. And also, like, all this connection he has with number 11, like the letter K is the 11th letter in the alphabet, these kind of things, you know? And so, it just makes sense to kind of, like, tell that story. Can you talk to me about hashtag keep Sue fresh? <laughs> what do you want to know about? Uh, how did that friendship come about? 2016 Rio Olympics. You know what's crazy? My first Instagram post was 2016. You met Sue Bird 2016. You won your first championship. 
2016. But I mean, you know. Okay. Th things are, like, there are no coincidences. Boy. But <laughs> Keep Sue Fresh was an idea that um, I came up with. I literally, I wonder if I could like screenshot it, but I had it in my notes. I was writing it down. I was like, man, Sue's gonna be hurt this year. I gotta think of a way to keep Sue fresh. Hashtag keep Sue fresh. I, I brought it to the Nike table. I said, we gotta keep Sue fresh. Like whatever Sue needs, whatever Sue wants, give it to her, give it to her. Like don't hold back. She won the championship. Whatever Sue wants, give it to her. Like because she deserves the same platform that I have to be able to showcase her own aesthetic, her mm -hmm. own style, her own point guard flair. She's one of the best to ever do it. Like, it's a fact. Best to ever do it. One of the most talented, smartest, cerebral people that I've been around. But as a player, oh man, she's even more special. So when I got a chance to be with her in Rio, I would just sit there and ask her questions about music, art, different genres. She's from the city, you know, she's from around here. So it was like a connection anyway, so. Am I crazy for challenging Sue Bird one-on-one? I think she you're crazy it. for challenging any professional one-on-one, -on -one, like in anything. Like I think as a common person that sees professionals as an idol or you idolize them, I think it's a bad idea anyway. Like it's like if I get on the tennis court, do I think it's a bad idea to challenge Rafael Nadal? Yes, it's a bad idea. Why would you challenge a professional that spent hours? You spend like 30 minutes pooping in life fitness or like LA fitness. An hour, an hour. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's just a bad idea. There's no going back now. Challenge is accepted. So eventually I'm gonna have to play her. I mean, good luck. All right, fair enough. Mm -hmm. So I know you're very into the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Duke, mm -hmm. men's basketball. So I do this uh, little game. It's, it's kind of like putting on your GM hat. Mm -hmm. we're, we're fantasy drafting. So I came up with a list of, you know, some of the best Duke players. I took you off because you're a GM now. Of you're course. not allowed to pick yourself. I uh, have a pen. You uh, could put like a Bill Russell and be like a coach player. Is that, he did do it. Is that doable? Bill Russell did do it. So who gets the first pick? That's the biggest question. So we'll make it fair, okay? Guess my favorite color and you'll get first pick. What's my favorite color? Green. Mm, blue. Thank you. I'll take first pick. Okay. First pick, I am going. What's your favorite color blue? Why aren't you wearing a blue shirt today? It's a long story. I didn't do laundry. But there's nothing blue about what you're wearing. You're like, I, my favorite color is red. Hint of red. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, something like I represent blue. No, you know what? You go first. Okay, thank you. Okay. Man, this is tough. With the first pick. This is crazy. I'm not on here. Yeah, you can't pick yourself. All right. Um, first pick, J. Will. Wow, okay, I'm impressed. Okay. My first pick will be Grant Hill. Mm hmm. Like that one? Yeah. My second pick, Brandon Ingram. By the way, it's positionless basketball. Brandon Ingram. I'm going to go with J.J. Reddick. I, I figured. It's, I mean, oh, come on, man. So that's off the list. I go Justice Winslow. Wow, you're going so new school. Why, why, why did you pick Justice Winslow? Because he's, he's it's my dog, number one, and he's a dog. He's, he's gonna hawk JJ Reddick and Grant Hill the whole game. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to shoot one time. Okay. He will hawk. Zion Williamson, I will take him. You forgot about a dog on here, <laughs> JT. Oh, is it Jason Taylor? Dog. No, he's there, he's down here. No, no, I'm saying you forgot about, like you didn't draft him. Oh. Jason Tatum on his prime. All right, you're right. Sheesh. Jason Tatum in his prime. We haven't even. Oh my goodness, he's gonna be a dog. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got Williamson, Grant Hill, JJ Redick. Let me take uh, Marvin Bagley. Mm-hmm. Make sure his height's right. <laughs> Are you in your? I'm going Jaleel. Jaleel Okafor. Yep. I'm gonna take Elton Brand. How's that? That's solid. And then you have a reserve? So I have right now Jason Tatum, Brandon Ingram, Justice Winslow, Jay Williams, Jaleel Okafor. I'll take RJ Barrett. Ooh, not bad. Damn it. Just All right. Do you, uh, who do you recommend I take? Mm, Vernon Carey's good. Vernon Carey? Wow. He's a young bull. I know. He's playing this year. Young bull. All right, I'll take Vernon Carey. Yeah. That's a high praise. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have Elton Brand, Vernon Carey, J.J. Redick, Grant Hill, Marvin Bagley, and Zion Williamson. I will leave it up to the public 
to see who has the better team when it comes to a heads up match. We're just dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Kyrie, is there anything I'm missing from the Kyrie Sixes? Man, well, um, I don't think you really missed anything other than like, this took me a lot of time to design and it really, really hits home for me in terms of um, just what it means, uh, where I am in my life now. I wanted to have a really, really cool hooping shoe, uh, really one that looked good on the court. And now for this one, I wanted to have the translation be really dope as a lifestyle cultural shoe. One that when you see it, you know that it was paying homage and showing respect to the OGs that came before me that were designing. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to diversify or be dynamic as a creator or designer without them stepping out, you know. Obviously you have like the Nike Air Yeezy series or like the Jordan 2, like Tinker, and then, you know, like you, you see their process in terms of what they did in order to design. And I just wanted to understand that, utilize those tools and make something my own. And I took a lot of time doing this, man. So I'm really proud of it, but also, the most impactful thing is just what it stands for for my community. For sure. Um, being able to really impact different communities all over, all the different connections and collaborations that I did in the past, that was all just to create those relationships. So where I am now, I can still have those as great mentors or mentees or, you know, I could utilize their expertise to make mine even better. Um, I connect to, to so many different people and brands that you know, you're like, what could happen next? And I just enjoy that I went outside of just just a normal basketball shoe. I did Friends, I did SpongeBob, I did Bandulu, I did Confetti's. I did, like, you can think about all the collabs I did. I did one with Siraj um, from my mom. I mean, I have different symbols, different numerology aspects, different universal truths. Like, it was a big deal for me to be able to be at this point to design and be respected as one too. Kyrie, thank you for sharing the knowledge. Thank you for the great conversation. Thanks for the huge, book. Yeah, well, absolutely. I have a huge favor. Can you sign this for me? Absolutely. Because I have Ben signed the other shoe. Mm -hmm. So now it's ours. Ben case. signed the shoe? Yeah. Come on, he's a legend around here. Black or, black or red? By the way, have you seen Ben Who? I don't need to see Ben Who. What? Ben, you want to you wanna come on camera and dress this? No, he's good. <laughs>